the movie opens 10 years after the post-apocalyptic events of the first film. Survivors Tallahassee, Columbus, Wichita, and Little Rock, Wichita's little sister, have become experts in identifying and disposing of various zombie types. These zombies are identifiable with their characteristics, like Homer being the dumb zombie, Hawking the smart zombie, and lastly, Ninja, the silent and deadly zombie. Subsequently, we now see the primary survivors, Columbus, Tallahassee, Little Rock, and her sister Wichita. They collectively fight and shoot the swarm of bloodthirsty zombies in front of the White House. After wiping the zombies out, they move into the abandoned White House and make it their home, where they hang out together and enjoy the little things as part of Columbus's rules. They live together as a family. Tallahassee, being the father figure to Little Rock and Columbus and Wichita, as a happy couple. They've been safely living together since the spread of the virus. They celebrate Christmas on a normal day, and Tallahassee hands them his presents. He gives Columbus a book, and Little Rock a new gun. Little Rock does not look happy, but is eager to try it. Tallahassee explains it's Elvis Presley's gun. She gets out to try it and kill zombies. As an acting father, Tallahassee wants to go with her, but Little Rock has an attitude. Then, Wichita is lying on the bed with Columbus, where he pulls out a small box from the drawer. He then kneels in front of Wichita and shows her the diamond ring. Unexpectedly, Wichita does not look happy, as she believes that married couples are only bound to get divorced. So, Columbus apologizes, telling her he'll do it when she's ready. The following day, Tallahassee finds a note from Wichita and Little Rock, who have left due to Little Rock feeling Tallahassee treats her like a child, and Wichita's fear that she's too attached to Columbus. Columbus wakes up excited and is walking down the hall when he sees Tallahassee looking sad about their departure. Meanwhile, the two girls drive down the road. Wichita lectures her sister that getting too attached is not a good idea as she expresses her frustrations with Columbus. So Wichita tells Little Rock she's lucky that she doesn't have a boyfriend to stress about. Little Rock responds that she doesn't like how Tallahassee acted as her father. One month later, Tallahassee and Columbus roam around the abandoned shopping mall using their electric scooter. Columbus still talks about his relationship with Wichita, while Tallahassee represses his longing for the girls. While Columbus smells the scented candles on the shelves, he's startled by Madison, who's also survived Zombieland alone since she was 14. Madison introduces herself to Tallahassee, who gets offended when she thinks he's Columbus's father. She tells them she lives in the freezer and survives by staying inside, but Tallahassee seems annoyed by Madison. Columbus brags that he has a list of rules for surviving and that they set up a camp in the White House inviting her to come back with them. Later, they arrive at the White House. Tallahassee talks to Columbus in the office and irritatingly scolds him for inviting Madison. Then, Madison comes in and asks Columbus to have a tour. Upon entering his room, Madison pins him down, and soon after, they have sex. Tallahassee gets up when he suddenly hears a noise. He walks down the hallway. Columbus is also on the lookout. Moments later, they both break into a room and are shocked to see Wichita. Wichita tells them she only returned to get some weapons and explains that Little Rock has left to Graceland with a pacifist musician, Berkeley. They met on the road. Wichita says that she did warn her, but Little Rock is stubborn, left her a note, and ran away with him. Tallahassee is enraged that Little Rock is dating a musician. Wichita tells Tallahassee that he's overbearing and is probably pushing Little Rock away. As they walk to the living room, Wichita informs them that Berkeley mentioned a more agile and durable super zombie. Fearing for Little Rock's safety, the group decides to head towards Graceland. Columbus and Wichita are left having small talk about how they ended their relationship. Wichita apologizes for what she did, when suddenly, Madison comes down the stairs asking Columbus to return to bed. Wichita is shocked and leaves upset. Afterwards, they put their bags in a rundown minivan and are ready to go when they see Madison with her baggage to join them. While on their way, Madison talks to Wichita 
and she responds to her sarcastically as she feels bitter for having an affair with Columbus. They stop on the road and survey the area through binoculars. They see a luxurious RV nearby, so they walk there. As soon as they arrive, Madison opens the bus door, which causes the alarm to go off and gets the zombies' attention. Columbus gets on the roof to see the area and gives directions on where Tallahassee and Wichita are to shoot. They kill the zombies who are approaching one after another. Wichita loads her gun while a zombie is about to attack her. Luckily, Madison saves her by spraying the zombie with her hormone spray. Methodically fighting back as a team, they encounter one of the super zombies that takes multiple gunshots to kill, leading Columbus to nickname it the T-800 after the Terminator franchise. After killing the zombies, Tallahassee excitedly drives the luxurious RV, but the wheels unfortunately go flat. He suggests getting the bus with a clown painted on it, but Columbus hates it, so Tallahassee annoyingly drives their minivan. While they're hitting the road, Madison suddenly feels something strange. Her skin changes its appearance and she feels nauseous. Madison shows signs of zombification. So they pull over, and while Madison vomits, Tallahassee and Wichita encourage Columbus that they need to leave, as she'll later turn into a zombie. Columbus takes his gun out and runs after Madison. She runs away to a forest while telling him not to come closer. But then, Columbus says goodbye before he shoots his gun multiple times and returns to the car. They drive overnight and arrive at their destination. Tallahassee gets excited to see his idol's place and where Little Rock is located, only to discover that it's turned into ruins. Disappointed, they proceed to drive and look for Little Rock. Later, they find a well-lit motel and continue to head there. Surprisingly, the car used by Little Rock is parked outside. They enter the hotel and look for Little Rock. Inside the motel, they see the historical stuff of Elvis Presley, which makes Tallahassee delighted. He plays the piano, when suddenly, the motel owner named Nevada arrives to stop him and points a gun at him. Just then, Wichita and Columbus arrive and hold Nevada at gunpoint. Wichita immediately asks her about her sister, but Nevada tells them Little Rock and Berkeley left a few days ago. She then reveals that Little Rock and the peace lover, Berkeley, took another vehicle and are heading to Babylon, a hippie commune where no guns are allowed. Meanwhile, Berkeley drives while telling Little Rock how peaceful Babylon is, and brags that it's a place without guns and violence. While on the road, a bunch of zombies are running after them. At the same time, Tallahassee and Landlord are talking about their idol, Elvis Presley. Tallahassee shows off his talent as he imitates Elvis. It appeals to her, and bonding over their love of Elvis, Nevada and Tallahassee spend the night together. The following day, Little Rock and Berkeley arrive at Babylon. As they set foot at the entrance, the Babylon gatekeeper confiscates their guns and melts them. Back at the motel, Tallahassee wears Elvis's outfit, trying to impress Nevada, when suddenly, they hear a loud crashing noise. As they rush outside, Tallahassee freaks out to see his car being crushed by a man with a monster truck. The driver wearing a cowboy hat named Albuquerque gets out and yells at Tallahassee, saying it's his driveway. The man seems to be Nevada's other man. As the two men talk to each other, Wichita and Columbus strangely notice the resemblance in their behavior. Suddenly, another man named Flagstaff comes out of the vehicle. This time, Wichita notices his resemblance to Columbus. They introduce each other, and Flagstaff indeed has similarities with Columbus, as he also has his own commandments. They compete and discuss their rules and commandments with each other. But Nevada interrupts them by asking why they're back so soon. Flagstaff and Albuquerque tell them they encountered the super zombies that they call Bolts, to which Columbus counters that they actually call them T-800s. Later, while they're having drinks, they notice some noise outside. They look out the window and see a bunch of super zombies climbing up the monster truck. Albuquerque brags about being an expert in killing the deadliest zombies, and together with Flagstaff, they head outside to kill them. After wiping the zombies out, they proudly come back inside. 
Suddenly, Nevada notices that Albuquerque's arm has a bite mark, but he lies and says it's a tattoo. They all look at him worriedly as he assures them that he's okay. Just then, Albuquerque starts showing the symptoms. He vomits and behaves strangely. He argues that his partner also got bitten twice, but Flagstaff denies it. After that, Flagstaff and Albuquerque turn into zombies and start attacking the others. The two zombies run after Tallahassee and Columbus, and they all circle the place. Shortly after, they're both killed with Nevada delivering the final shot in Flagstaff's head. The following day, the three are heading out, but before they do, Tallahassee kisses Nevada goodbye, and she gives him a ring, telling him to stay alive. Tallahassee tries to drive the monster truck, but does not know how to operate it. With no other choice left but to use the minivan again, Tallahassee hands the key to Columbus as he hates driving that outdated car. While driving on the road, they're stunned to see Madison driving the clown-themed ice cream truck. Her zombification earlier was simply a nut allergy, triggered by eating trail mix. They freak out as Madison, who they thought was dead, looks healthy and cheerfully greets them. Rejoining the group, Madison explains that she kept telling Columbus that it was just an allergy, and she thanks him for not shooting her in the head. Columbus regrets meeting Madison again, as he already realizes that he and Wichita are meant to be together. Moments later, they arrive at Babylon and see a tall tower. As soon as they get out of the car, Tallahassee throws a grenade at the minivan, making it explode. Then, the gatekeeper at the entrance warns them that guns are not allowed inside. Tallahassee mocks the guard and tells her he'll never surrender his gun. Wichita tells him that if he wants to see Little Rock, he should comply, so they give up their weapons. They walk around and immediately find Little Rock. Wichita excitedly hugs her sister. Tallahassee is angry at Berkeley. Little Rock asks why they came as she also explains that Babylon people are peaceful, yet Tallahassee keeps freaking out for melting their guns. That night, a satisfied Tallahassee departs, as he's happy to see Little Rock safe and sound, only to find a horde of super zombies attracted by the commune's fireworks. He sees the group of zombies approaching and runs back to warn the group. He arrives at Babylon soon and warns them that zombies are approaching. He's extremely worried, as their weapons are melted and turned into pendants. So Tallahassee devises a plan. Everyone prepares the materials available for defense. Soon after setting up, the zombies arrive. They use the exploding biodiesel to light and burn the zombies at the entrance. After that, they celebrate when the container explodes, killing all the nearby zombies. But after a few seconds, they see numerous zombies continuously approaching. The zombie horde is more massive than expected, and the group is surrounded and almost overwhelmed. Luckily, Nevada arrives in Albuquerque's monster truck, rescuing the group, although the vehicle soon rolls over. Escaping upstairs into the tower, Tallahassee leads the zombies to chase him. He runs towards the end of the building and jumps off. Tallahassee uses a construction crane hook to dangle just out of reach, but the last two zombies grab his leg as they fall, and Little Rock shoots them with a pistol given to her earlier by Tallahassee, rescuing him. The two reconcile as Little Rock hugs him like a missing daughter and tells him that she kept his present. Afterwards, Wichita accepts Columbus's proposal of marriage, making him delighted. Finally, Columbus kneels and puts the ring on her finger. Meanwhile, Tallahassee and Nevada kiss each other followed by Madison in Berkeley, since Little Rock has already broken up with him. In the end, Tallahassee excitedly drives Elvis's Cadillac. As Nevada asks them where they're heading, Columbus responds by saying home. He remarks that they finally found their home in each other. The movie ends with them driving away joyously while a lone zombie runs after them. Only one of the best movies of all time. What'd you think of our movie recap? Let me know in the comment section below. And hey, if you want to see more zombie movie recaps, then make sure you're subscribed to our channel and check out this video that's on screen now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.